complete my culture studies portion what should i do do you also ask yourself this kind of question sometimes do you have a tough times to complete the paper or your portion because of this you get angry and frustrated and that's end up in real mess if yes then stay with me hi i am susan and welcome to a to z english literature channel the place to enjoy enhance and experience english well today friends i am going to take you through a session on culture studies related terms so be with me i will give you simple lecture on yes so guys the first term acculturation it means assimilation to a different culture typically the dominant one acculturation is a process of cultural conduct and exchange through which a person or group comes to adopt certain values and practices of a culture that is not originally their own to a greater or lesser extent the result is that the original culture of the person or group remains but it is changed by this process acculturation is a two way process so those within the majority culture often adopt elements of minority cultures with which they come into contact the process plays out between groups where neither is necessarily a majority or a minority it can happen at both group and individual levels and can occur as a result of in person contact or contact through art literature or media acculturation is not the same as the process of assimilation though some people use the words interchangeably assimilation can be an eventual outcome of the acculturation process but the process can have other outcomes as well including rejection integration marginalization and transmutation the first non use of the term acculturation within the social sciences was by john wesley powell in a report for the us bureau of ethnology in 1880 powell later defined the term as the psychological changes that occur within a person due to cultural exchange that occurs as a result of extended contact between different cultures powell observed that while they exchange cultural elements each retains its own unique culture how, how acculturation, acculturation differs from, from assimilation assimilation can be an eventual outcome of acculturation but it doesn't have to be also assimilation is often a largely one way process rather than the two way process of cultural exchange that is acculturation i will give an example for acculturation an indian teenager eating spaghetti western or key west chicken while listening to Chris Martin or Bruno Mars it can be seen as an instance of acculturation it is also acculturation when a child imbibes the cultural practices of his or her surrounding settings when brought up in a specific society the key factors which facilitate the process of acculturation are social institutions such as family religion educational institutions and so on everyone living in a society is encultured drawing in the values customs norms food habits etc in a particular culture this term gains importance in the discourse of cultural studies the central argument of cultural studies is that being a person requires the process of acculturation There are two kinds of acculturation the natural one for example the child who becomes an african by living in the african culture the other kind of acculturation might be forced or triggered by political or military or economic conquest of one country by another country africans being taught to speak english before the african independence is an example of the second type So it is the amalgamation of two separate cultures. It is the blend of the two separate cultures. Next term is a French noun, flano. Flano means stroller, lounger, or loafer. Flano is the act of strolling with all of its accompanying associations. So flano is an ambivalent figure of urban riches, representing the ability to wander. detached from society with no other purpose than to be an acute observer of society walter benjamin employed this concept in his reading of 19th century french poet charles baudelaire the flaneur is the stroller or window shopper and came into existence with 
the building of the Paris arcades in the period of the Second Empire in the 1840s. The name is given to a crucial figure of modernism as it emerged in the late 19th century and early 20th century. And it is emerged in the late 19th century and early 20th century. As understood by Baudelaire, the flaneur or stroller was one of the heroes of modern life. A flaneur was held to be an urban contemporary and stylish person who walked the anonymous spaces of the modern city. Here, he experienced the complexity, disturbances and confusions of the streets with their shops, displays, images and variety of people. This perspective emphasizes the urban character of modernism. So, the Flano took in the ephemeral or transient beauty and vivid, if transitory, impressions of the crowds, seeing everything anew in its immediacy, yet achieving a certain detachment from it. The idea of the Flano directs our attention towards the way in which the urban landscape has become aestheticized through architecture, billboards, shop displays, street signs, and so on, and through the fashionable apparel, hairstyles, makeup, and so on of the people who inhabit this world. Some feminist writers argued that the term Flanu was a male figure who woke spaces from which women were largely excluded and as such demonstrates the deeply gendered character of the modernist experience. The adventures of the Flano and of modernism were one of male coded public spaces from which women were excluded. For example, in the cafes and the boulevards, or entered only as objects for male consumption. Thus, the Flano's gaze was frequently erotic and women were the objects of that gaze. In recent times, critics has coined the term Flanus to describe the female equivalent of the Flano. Next term, Levicism. It is a term associated with the British critic F. R. Lewis, Frank Raymond Lewis. His proponents claimed that he introduced a seriousness into English studies. Lewis' criticism is difficult to directly classify, but it can be grouped into four chronological stages. The first is that of his early publications and essays including New Bearings in English Poetry 1932 and Revaluation in 1936. So his famous Publications are New Bearings in English Poetry 1932 and Revaluation in 1936. Here, he was concerned primarily with re-examining poetry from the 17th to 20th centuries and this was accomplished under the strong influence of T.S. Eliot. So, he was concerned primarily with re-examining poetry from the 17th to 20th centuries and this was accomplished under the strong influence of T.S. Eliot. T.S. Eliot Thomas Turns Eliot was a poet, essayist, publisher, playwright, literary critic and editor and so on. He was considered one of the 20th century's major poets and his famous poems are, his famous works are The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufock, Wasteland, The Hollow Man, Ash Wednesday and so on. In his famous essay Culture and Anarchy, it is a series of periodical essays and it was published in Cornhill magazine. Arnold's famous piece of writing on culture established his high Victorian cultural agenda which remained dominant in debate from the 1860s until the 1950s. According to his view, culture is a study of perfection. He further wrote that culture seeks to do away with classes to make the best that has been thought and known in the world current everywhere to make all men live in an atmosphere of sweetness and delight. So his often quoted phrase Culture is the best which has been thought and said comes from the preface to culture and anarchy. So the book contains most of the terms like culture, high culture, sweetness and light, barbarian, philistine, hebraism and so on. So, F. R. Lewis held the view that culture is the high point in human existence. Thus, he supports what is later called high culture. High culture means this most commonly refers to the set of cultural products, mainly in the arts, held in the highest esteem by a culture. It is the culture of an elite such as the aristocracy or intelligentsia. In other words, high culture is stereotypically seen as not being accessible in the masses. Not being accessible to the masses, it is the culture of the refined and wealthy. So in the second phase, 
He then turned his attention to fiction and the novel, producing The Great Tradition in 1948 and D. H. Lawrence's Novelist in 1955. Two of his last publications embodied the critical sentiments of his final years: The Living Principle, English as a Discipline of Thought, 1975, and Thought, Words, and Creativity, Art and Thought in Lawrence, 1976. He canonized traditional literature, which he called the Great Tradition. The text of the great tradition ranging from Shakespeare to Jane Austen must be taught at the schools and colleges to get the students acquainted with the social and cultural values of the great tradition of British literature. This argument on behalf of the great tradition of British literature is called Leavisism. So what is Leavisism? The text of the great tradition ranging from Shakespeare to Jane Austen must be taught at the schools and colleges to get the students acquainted with the social and cultural values of the great tradition of British literature. This argument on behalf of the great tradition of British literature is called Leavisism. Next term, ideology and culture. Ideology itself is a part of culture. Ideology is a set of ideas under the culture. Culture can provide space and contains a variety of different ideologies, even the conflicting ideologies. But ideology is homogeneous, whereas culture is heterogeneous. Ideology is unilinear. Culture is multilinear. Ideology is a thought or a collection of thoughts and founded by a thinker or a person. But culture is founded by plurality of ideas and people. Ideology is a highly problematic term in cultural theory. According to Karl Marx and Engels, ideology refers to the ruling ideas of the ruling class. Ideas circulated by the ruling class to make the people submissive to the dominant class of the society. So this definition suggests already that ideology can be understood in two ways, both as a fixed set of ideas and as a process whereby the partial views of a ruling class come to hold sway over the whole of a society. According to Italian Marxist philosopher Antonio Francisco Gramsci, his views about ideology is in a different way. To him, ideology is a system of ideas, meanings, and practices which indirectly support the power of particular social classes. Here, ideology is not separate from the practical activities of life. but provides people with rules of practical conduct and moral behavior rooted in day-to-day -day conditions for gramsci ideology can take the form of a coherent set of ideas it more often appears as the fragmented meanings of common sense inherent in a variety of representations within this paradigm common sense and popular culture become the crucial sites of ideological conflict The French Marxist philosopher Louis Pierre Althusser According to him ideology is a system of representations such as myths images ideas or concepts entwined with an existence and a historical role at the heart of a given society it is also the representation of the imaginary relationship of individuals to their real conditions of existence so according to althusser ideology is a system of representation such as myths images ideas or concepts endowed with an existence and a historical role at the heart of a given society one central concept in althusser's writings is ideology early althusser argued that ideology is a system of representations governed by rules that severe political ends later in his publications of lenin and philosophy and other essays in 1970 althusser drastically changed his position on ideology so he argued that it is realized in the ideology it is realized in real actions and behaviors Within this framework Althusser introduces the concept of interpolation otherwise known as hailing ideologies call out or hail people and offer a particular identity which they accept as natural or obvious in this way the dominant class exerts a power over individuals that is quite different from abject force according to Althusser individuals are interpolated from the day that they are born and perhaps even before since parents and others conceive of the role and identity that their child will assume next term ideological state apparatus isa so friends how do we know that india is a secular country 
we learned it at school right and who decided that we must learn india secularism in our school days so this school curriculum is an example of the ideological state apparatus which is the tool a government uses to control the opinions of its public so this term ideological state apparatus coined by louis althusser in his essay ideology and ideological state apparatuses According to Althusser, state power is maintained with the help of two systems: repressive structures and ideological apparatuses. Repressive structures include police, military, courts and prisons. But during peace time, the state maintains its power by securing the internal consent of the people. This is achieved through ideological apparatus like school or college curriculum, media, literature, art, cultural activities and so on. These ideological apparatuses make the people sympathetic to the aims of the state. Literature is not simply a text but a production of legal, educational and cultural institutions. Althusser designates a series of institutions as ideological state apparatuses, ISAs, namely the family, the education system, the church and the mass media. So, the private domain controls people with what they are being taught by religion or by school or ruled by their own culture. For example, if we refuse to go to church, we became outcast in our community that will not accept us in society. Therefore, to be a part of this community, we must follow the dominion powers ideology of going to church and being brainwashed to think and act the way they want you. So, the fear of being outcast is what makes ISA work. On the other hand, the fear of violence is how RSA works. So guys, Althusser's work was significant in elevating the debate about ideology to the forefront of thinking within cultural studies. Well, this brings me to end of the today's session. So friends, manage your negative thoughts, be patient and I'm sure things better for you. If you have negative thoughts, make sure that you find a resolution. So I hope that you enjoyed watching the video and it was informative for you. So try to be a positive person and you will always be successful. So friends, I will be come back with another video soon. Until then, stay safe, stay at home, keep practicing, keep studying. Take care. Bye-bye.